This is a story from around a decade ago, but every time I look back, that memory haunts me. Anyways, let me start the story. This is from the summer of 2010. I was staying at my grandpa's for vacation. I had a neighbor, let's call her Sam. Sam and I have known each other since we were toddlers, so we were great friends. Sam had a huge lawn and we'd usually hang out there. That day, both of us were playing tennis together. We got tired after a while and decided to drink Coca-Cola. So we started climbing up the hill and soon we reached a small shop there. After drinking, we took our walk down. While walking down the hill, there was this small path in between two houses. Our parents had warned us not to go there, but at 12 years old, we didn't know any better. We went through the path, which was covered with leaves and a bunch of trees. It soon led to a road, which was connected to the highway on the right, but the road was parallel to the road which we took earlier to the shop. On the left, we saw the road go down, so we went down that side, but soon the inclination of the slope turned from around 25 to 30 degrees to 60 to 70 degrees. We literally started slipping. We soon reached the bottom. We looked ahead and saw just a barren path, no houses within at least two miles. To our left and right, there was this water which had an unbearable stench. So we walked a bit faster and soon reached at something which looked as if it was abandoned. We went inside as we were curious without thinking twice. We saw a ton of metal cans lying around. As we explored the factory, we reached its back end and saw a puddle of some liquid. The liquid looked like water, but it had a weird sky blue tone and some frogs were floating on it. We saw some stairs and climbed them. The whole building was covered in moss and rust, so we didn't touch anything to avoid getting any shots later. As we reached the floor above, we saw some t-shirts and pants lying around. Sam checked her watch and it was 6.15 p.m. and we had to head back soon. As I was about to go down the stairs, she pulled me back up and held her hand against my mouth. Sam pointed at the window. We looked over and what I saw sent chills down my spine. A man, probably 40s, about 5'6", just silently stood there, staring at the sky. The sun was starting to set. Sam gasped and pointed at his hand. Although it took me a second, I noticed he had a katana in his right hand. Sam gasped a bit loudly, and now the man saw us standing at the window. He looked at us with his big, bloody eyes. He gave a wide grin and just stared. The katana looked bludgeoned, and his shirt had some blood on it too. He then looked at the ground for a second and stared back, this time angrily. He started sprinting toward the stairs at an extremely fast speed. We didn't know what to do. Sam yelled, jump! There was no other option, so we jumped out of the window and into the stench-filled water. As we looked behind, we saw this man now with his neck twisted at a weird angle. He started running behind us. Adrenaline pumped and we sprinted. Soon we reached the slope and started climbing. Sam, on the other hand, was a bit weak and he was almost catching up to her. I got scared and yelled for help, but no one came. Then I remembered what my teachers told me and started yelling, FIRE! Everyone came out of their houses only to see two kids being chased by a lunatic with a bludgeoned sword. A guy who was on his bike came at full speed and rammed the lunatic, flinging him away. He got up and started sprinting back at us when another guy pulled out his gun and said, You better get the hell out of here before I put four bullets in your head! The guy turned around and started running. Sam's parents and grandpa came there to pick us up and we both got yelled at. Even to this day, I'm thankful for what my teacher said. If I hadn't yelled fire, well, I wouldn't be here to tell you this story. As for that man, he was never found again.